Yo everyone, your boy is here today, and I apologize if the way the frame is set up is very bad and, you know, I'm kind of out of the frame a little, or the controllers aren't uh, as well in focus as you'd like them to be. But, as you can tell from the title, today we're going to be comparing a Battle Beaver to a Cinch. Uh, I've owned the Cinch for about a year, over a little bit over a year now, and I've owned the Battle Beaver for a little bit over two months now. And I have good things to say about both, but, you know, this is going to be in-depth. And first of all, I want to apologize once again about the everything that's messy around me. Uh, literally, everything's just crazy right now. Um, we're redoing a lot of things. My desk is a mess. My hair is a mess. I got this sh in up in a ponytail. It's not looking good. My face hair doesn't look good. But to the point of the video. <clears throat> so, let's we'll start with the cinch. I got the cinch first. Uh, I made a few other videos on my channel, if you guys haven't seen them already, about the cinch. Uh, I went basic, trying to save money. I'm not, I'm not looking to get something that's super, super cool looking. Uh, just looking for the function of the buttons, really. But I do like to keep them uh, noticeably different from my other controllers, so I try to go every, every one a little bit different. So, the cinch was very nice. The buttons, they, they all felt good. The, the actual buttons, they, a little bit cheap, but I mean, the the plastic buttons. You know, you can't really ask for anything too crazy. You got a nice little cinch home button. Um, they're triggers, uh, just regular triggers, nothing important. But their buttons, more importantly, the big, the big part of the buttons, for me, I have kind of small hands, and a perfectly grip right where my middle fingers landed on my controller. They do have a very noticeably loud clicking, like, I don't know if you guys can hear it from there, but it's pretty loud. I mean, it's actually louder than my keyboard, surprisingly, so that's pretty crazy. Um, and they, are, they do have a firm push, like you push, and it goes. It, do, it doesn't push in a little bit. It has no leeway. It goes instantly in once you once you get enough uh, force. It just goes instantly in. And overall, um, uh, I don't really. I never really noticed them slipping or, or not working as well. One thing I did notice though, and I'm not sure uh, what it was caused by in the controller, uh, was when I would, especially in Call of Duty, I would like go to dive or slide, and I'd hold down my slide on my from my paddle button. It would um, sometimes it would just make me crouch, and I, I think that's more of a problem with Call of Duty rather than the controller. But there's no really there's no real way to know. Um, another thing is uh, the remap chip. For some reason, the buttons would randomly come unmapped, and I'm not sure what caused it to happen, but it did happen quite a few times. So overall, the cinch was very very nice. Uh, the charging port though did start to become loose. Uh, I really didn't like that about it. It did become loose, but I think that's a problem with all controllers and not just cinch in general. So, next one, Battle Beaver. This one, uh, n when you hold the controller, it is noticeably, um, supposedly they are they're supposed to be the same backs and fronts. It might just be because this is the PS4S controller, and that is not, uh, it, it has a nicer feel to it, 100%. But I believe that's just because this is a PS4S and this is a regular, the cinch was a regular PS4. Um, uh, for now, the charging port is, is tighter than that one, but I feel like it is getting looser. Um, buttons, same as the other ones. They, f they, they feel a little more firm. Uh, that's about it, though. It's, they're not as squishy. I like them a lot better on this controller. They don't uh, wobble around in the, in the slot as much. And more importantly, you go down to the buttons. The buttons, they have... Uh, I don't know if you guys will go to see it. Uh, maybe I'll move it close. It might mess up the, uh, the focus, though. Um, the buttons, uh, I do like them better. They have the same... No leeway, instant snap when you put enough pressure on it. But they are they are softer touch and they don't stick out as much and they're not as loud. So like, actually hearing them side by side, they're actually about the same volume. Uh, yeah, I, for some reason, uh, they just uh, they sound quieter, but they um, realistically I think they are actually the same the same uh, volume. But next on, we're going to talk about the trigger stops. Now, these trigger stops are absolutely amazing. They, they really quicken up my response time. Um, it, it was incredible how, how much of a difference I actually saw. Um, it was a little bit something to get used to, but, you know, once I got used to it, it was, it's all good. Um, they, it's just so quick. They work so good. There's no, not really any leeway. It's instant click. There is one thing I don't like about it, and you guys might not be able to see it from here, but if you look between these triggers... There is a uh, there's a little piece of plastic in between there, and that's what holds the trigger down on the button, uh, so it's almost an instant click. And I'm not a big fan of how cheap it looks. It looks like a very cheap method to make a 
uh, a stop, but you know it works, so I'm not gonna pl complain about it too much. But that is something I think they I, I hope they do improve on in the future. Um, and overall, I have to say this is also a very well built controller. I said I've only had this one three month, two months. This one's lasted a year, uh, and there's not too many problems. It did have some wireless Bluetooth issues to my PS4, but that um, that was hard to tell whether it's from you know having so much Bluetooth around or if it was from just the controller's Bluetooth being poor in the first place. Uh, this one so far I've not had any problems with Bluetooth, so I'm gonna guess it might just be the upgrade to a PS4S controller or um, or something uh, that I maybe something changed in my environment where Bluetooth was cut down. Uh, I'm not I'm not too sure on that, but overall I do I would have to say I do enjoy the Battle Beaver more. Now that is just uh, there's, there's a lot of things. Uh, this also is the remap chip. I've n only remapped it once and it has never unremapped since then. Uh, which by this point in time when I had my cinch, I did have to remap at least once or twice. Um, but every every one of my controls are staying mapped. The ports are nice and tight for now. Uh, I do feel they're gonna get loose. It's just a problem with you know. Anything really. I mean, it happens to your phones too. It happens with everything really. So there's not too much you can complain about that uh, until better technology comes out. But the trigger stops are absolutely amazing. I did not have trigger stops on the cinch, but you know, uh, I can tell that you know it can't get much better than these trigger stops you got right here. Um, they're very very good. Um, I did not get tension sticks, but uh, Battle Beaver does offer up to 160, I believe, gram tension sticks, which is incredible. I thought about getting them. And overall, I'd have to give this controller a really good rating. I have to say, I do like it more than that. One, because of the the trigger stops. I know I didn't test them on there, but the trigger stops I definitely like more. The the texture of the buttons and the way they don't like these ones the, on the cinch, they, they just feel so much more loose and like they're going to fall out or something. These ones feel a lot more sturdy. Maybe it's from not you know being used as long as that one was. Both controllers, I would say, are reliable. They were around the same price. I believe I paid... 160 for this and I paid about 140 for the Battle Beaver. The only thing that you can't do with the Battle Beaver when you buy it, you cannot have rumbles in. I previously used to play with rumble packs on. I used to play vibrate on. Very bad habit, but it's broken now that I bought a controller that does not even allow me to keep the vibrate the vibrate packs in. So or the rumble packs should say in. So I, I've adjusted to that. Cinch does offer the possibility of taking them out or leaving them in. But overall, I would say they're both very well built. But if you got to go with one and you have the money, I highly recommend going for the Battle Beaver overall. Yo, everyone, thank you all for watching. I hope you really did appreciate it. Sorry if the camera's shaking a little bit. Trying to hold it steady. It's the first time I'm trying to vlog with this camera, kind of. So, um, yep, that was our Cinch and Battle Beaver, uh, you know, comparison. If you guys really did enjoy it, please leave a like. And once again, sorry about, you know, everything looking messy and me looking ugly as always. But uh, have a great day, guys. Hope you really did enjoy.